Hello. Yesterday uh, I showed you how to create some pop culture inspired uh, portraits on top of used objects. So in this case we used slippers. So we managed to create a little Joker kind of character. Uh, yesterday's demonstration was with this Homer Simpson character. And this piece here, well, I don't know. <laughs> this just came from looking at the, the slipper after I'd primed it. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know, it reminds me of something in pop culture. But again, when you try these techniques out, you really should then move on to personalising them and to creating things that come from you. So it's all well and good to be inspired by other artists, but it's much better if you can take that inspiration, personalise it, and then transform it into your thing. So, these were all done on slippers. This encouraged me to look around the house and think about other materials that you wouldn't ordinarily paint on. And I came up with socks. Now these have all been put through the wash, obviously. Uh, they're all socks with holes in them, so I sliced them, I soaked them in PVA glue and dropped them on this canvas. And I moved them around a little bit as I was priming them to try and find little mouths and nose shapes because I'm going to paint portraits on these but ultimately what I was looking for was a feeling of chance of just dropping things down so there's a painter called Max Ernst who would do a thing with cutouts where he'd rip and cut out his drawings and drop them randomly and then piece them back together to make a new work so I kept that kind of random feeling going when I was dropping these uh, socks sodden with their uh, PVA glue. So I've got a palette full of uh, tones or full of paint colours that will help me with flesh. So some yellows, some pinks, some reds, some ochres, whites. Then I've got my blue, green and purple then for uh, making darker shadows and darker flesh tones. I'm going to paint quite randomly over a lot of this, lots of different flesh tones, and hopefully then that will help me find the faces as I'm going. Um, so, here we go. So you can see that I've laid down a number of fleshy kind of colour schemes. So I've gone where I found nose shapes and lip shapes. I've gone for a pinker, uh, warmer kind of skin tone. Um, I've used purples and, and a, a little touch of blue to put some shadow work in. I think once you find the eyes, you can build the rest of the face then around that. Um, I haven't quite decided on a background colour yet, I think it might be a blue. And what I'm trying to aim for is, as I'm painting these faces, is to have the eyes interacting with each other. So they're all quite a squished, contained bunch. You know, all kind of pushed in by the, the rectangle canvas. So this sense of claustrophobia I'd like to keep, and I'd like to... I'd like to almost sort of get the impression that each one is looking at the other one, telling the other one, you're not social distancing enough. Does that make sense? So I think if you can build a little narrative in a group portrait like this, if you can tell a little story, it'll make the painting that much more interesting. So uh, they're a little bit tacky, so I'm going to leave them dry a little bit longer, and then I'm going to work back into them. The style that I've been painting in, I'm starting with much darker colours and then working towards lighter colours. That just seems to work best for the way I paint. Other people, they do all their light colours first and then they do their shadows and their darks. Up to you how you want to tackle it. <laughs> 